What is up, everybody? This is Keith. I go by Gator Guy 231 across the DFS industry and here to break down Tuesday, February 23rd, two game Champions League slate. I hope you all did okay last week. Uh, mixed bag of results for me. Um, Tuesday, uh, you know, did okay in cash, not enough Mbappe and GPP, meaning no Mbappe and GPP after saying he would potentially kill Barcelona to counterattack. Should have looked at that lineup more, seen PK in. You know, that's, that's on me for not, uh, you know, using my own knowledge against me. And then um, Wednesday, I was on here saying, I don't really like Juve. Look down at my lineups, have so much Juve by the end. And for those of us that played Juve, you know how that went. So uh, looking forward to a bounce back this week. You know, honestly, I was talking to Tendril Storm about this. Uh, you know, some of you all know him just as the guy that keeps dominating GPP. I know him as my soccer partner at FSI, but um, just sometimes going back to our roots that some of these other leagues can kind of like, mess with what you know is best right you know you play some of these high scoring like minus thousand favorites where you're just stacking the crap out of teams and you know before you know it that's like your norm you go okay I need tons of this team and then you relook back at the odds and you're like hold on did I just stack a plus hundred favorite and a two and a half total is that really what just happened and you see your own faults. So, you know, I, I really, you know, one of the things I love about DFS is the constant learning that you have to be under, the constant like reevaluations of your own moves. Like, why did I do this? How did it work out? Was it process or was it results? Like, was my process good, the results just crap? Or were the results just good, but my process crap? Like, that, I feel like as really good DFS players that we want to become or are or keep trying to become great, that's what you have to keep doing. So some point, some point, I'm going to have time to do all these videos of all these things stuff in my head. I have like a note sheet of all these soccer videos I want to do. So they'll be coming soon. Also, quick little plug, getting Barry into so rare in some of my time for soccer, awesome platform. Um, yeah, if you ever want to talk it or you want to join and want some tips, eventually I'm going to try to do a video series on this. I, I keep making these promises of videos I want to do. I promise they, they are coming. But I'm going to drop my little referral code. It really helps. You know, once you get five rares, um, the person that refers you gets one, I think you get an extra. So if you are interested, you want some tips, DM me on Twitter at GatorGuy231. Use my code. That would be really appreciated. Um, you know, th th this stuff's blowing up. Um, I enjoy so rare because it's, there's a game involved too, and it's soccer. So check it out. And then the final reminder, bottom right of the screen for the YouTube channel, hit that, that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. We're over 2000 weren't there last week. We're soaring over there. FSI keeps growing. It's all because of you guys. Thank you for that. Like comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. All right, let's get into the games. No more plugs, no more random thoughts. Let's just get into the football. All right. Let's pull up the odds. As well as do. And let's start there. Do, 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 do. Make this bigger. Sometimes people go, they don't want to see my balance. So that's why if anybody ever asks why I make this a little bit bigger. There you go. All right, let's take a look at the odds. So we got Lazio hosting Bayern. First leg, Lazio plus 358. Bayern coming off of a really disappointing, disappointing performance on the weekend, minus 130. But that's a three and a quarter total. I want to stress that, three and a quarter total. The next game, Chelsea and Atletico. Two total, two. One, two. Full goal and a quarter less. Keep that in mind, that's big. Um, very, very even game. Atletico plus 173. Even more of a disappointment than poor performance from Atletico on the weekend. And I, and I kind of just want to start at that with Atletico. So I'm going to pull up real quick. Because I made a comment on Twitter that like Atletico the last like, month and a half just hasn't been the same Atletico. You know, got shown the standings. And I'm like, oh, probably should have looked that in more. But Atletico defensively, listen to the goals allowed because you know this is a Simeone team and we always think of Simeone team as just complete lockdowns I'm not saying that they're not going to a Chelsea okay I think Chelsea has some of their own woes um learning Tuchel system but like just listen to the goals allowed since January 21st and we're talking about Atletico Madrid Jan Oblak Diego Simeone Atletico Madrid one goal allowed versus Ibar one goal allowed versus Valencia two goals versus Cadiz so those are three not good La Liga sides goals against all of them Two against Celta Vigo, one against Granada, one against Levante. These are not stout teams. These are not stout teams. Now, they drew or won all those games. And then two at home versus Levante in a 0-2 loss. So this, the defensive ability, you know, whether it's, you know, Trippier being gone, whoever thought that we would say that, um, just there is a lot to break down with, with Atletico. And I think, and I, it's so weird to start at goalie, 
But I think that Jan Ublak at 4,800 will maybe be the chalk. And look, my first holder I made, I has on Jan, Jan Ublak too. But I just worry right away, right out the shoot, goalie, me talking goalie right away, that pause, just pause. Don't don't just click O block. Just just pause and let's let's think about these games. Again, I, I'm going to do it. I just throwing caution in the wind that this is not the same Atletico right now that we've seen previously. All right, let's go into the games. And I'm going to start with Chelsea and Atletico because I think all the juice is in the other game. I think that two of the first clicks into your lineup will be Mason Mount, who's been taking close to a monopoly of sets. It looks like ZH is out of favor under Tuchel. And then I think from Atletico, we just saw over the weekend, Ren and Lottie having 15 crosses versus Levante, taking left-sided corners. Um, we don't have Trippier. I think Carrasco, um, I believe, is still working on match fitness. We'll have to look at that lineup. But if there's no Carrasco and no Kieran Trippier, Ren and Lodi at 4,500 playing a wing back, crossing with some sets, you know, it's a virtual lock to me. The interesting thing to from this defensively is all the defenders in my opinion outside of Alfonso Davies are in this game I'm um, depending on how Chelsea lineup we saw Reese James struggle on the weekend 5400 I think it's fine Chowell seems completely out of favor for um, Tuchel but if he's in he might split some sets but it looks like Marcus Alonso um, you know has all of a sudden gone from being dead under Frank Lampard to being you know one of the first guys into Tuchel's lineup. So at 4,800, I think um, Alonzo, we've seen, you know, have no problem um, jumping forward. And here's the thing on, on this game. You know, I mentioned the two total. Then I mentioned Atletico's defensive woes. I'm, I'm saying all that because there's like a dichotomy here. I think this is a really interesting game. If you want to just go very, very, very contrarian, like everybody's going to spend up on Bayern pieces, Lewandowski, Kimmich, um, you know, Janabri. Uh, I think Moeller's out, you know, Sané, all those guys for Byron are going to be really, really, really popular. And I think that there's a lot of merit to running it back with Ciro Mobile um, and Luis Alberto from Lazio. There should be goals here. But, you know, a lot of people are going to go to the spend-ups in that game. And it's going to leave the likes, you know, if I just come to this game, it's going to leave the likes of Luis Suarez, who's been an outstanding goal from Jao Felix, Timo Werner, Hudson Adoy. Um, you know, I would assume that, you know, it might be um, the most beautiful man in, Florida, uh, in football, Olivier Giroud. He won't be owned at all at 8,000 at the striker position. So I think it's going to make all of them very kind of unowned. And, you know, I'm not saying play them in cash, but I'm saying if you just want some ownership edge, man, that's interesting. Um, especially just, again, with the struggles. We've seen Chelsea get loose on the back, and we've seen Atletico get loose on the back. And this game ends up 2-2. Man, you, you have a ton of like GPP leverage. All right, so cash plays from this game, Mountain Lodi. I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Coke at 4,000. You know, Coke is that, that deep line midfielder that does more defense than offense that I always tell you'd be worried about. And he might take some set pieces if we don't see Carrasco. But I worry about these guys when you pay 6K, right? Six, 7,000, and you're reliant on them on set pieces. At 4,000, I'd pay 4,000 for, you know, destroyer midfielders that have talent like Koke, you know, without set pieces. So I think a 4,000, he makes for probably one of the better value plays on the entire slate. Um, outside of those guys, I think Hudson Adoy is very viable for a, a cash forward if he's from that right wing back position, which I expect. Um, so I, I have no problem with him. Um, but I think everybody else is more GPP. You know, Suarez and Felix, while as good as they are, are still going to be more reliant on goal assist. Same with Werner. But again, if anybody showed up there with them in cash just based on their prices, I, that that makes sense to me. Um, you know, final, you know, guys, just to mention, um, you know, Jorginho is on PKs for, for Chelsea. You know, I'm not going to show up with them cash. I can promise you. I, I can't tell you for sure who I'm going to play, but it will not be Jorginho on this slate. But again, 500 more than Koke. He's been really good since Tuchel got there. Um, so I get that. You know, I'm going to say all this and watch me somehow end up with Jorginho. I, I can't see it, but. I'll just 99% chance. And maybe if I had a drink, then maybe I'll put Jorginho in. Um, then let's see where Kovacic, Kovacic at 3,400 has been phenomenal. Um, you know, he's been, you know, consistent, you know, what is like five to nine floor under two goals. Honestly, probably been one of their best players since he's gotten there. So I think Kovacic at 3,400, you know, fine value too.
Uh, I think that covers this game. All right, let's go to Bayern and Lazio. So, you know, while I just spent all this time talking about Chelsea Atletico being, you know, maybe pivotable, it's because the chalk and the way that the salaries are set up on this slate, I don't see a way that you don't, you know, have a lot from this game. Um, you know, let's start at the top. I think the consensus is going to be on Robert Lewandowski at 10-5. Look, real, reality is, you know, he's the best striker in the world, one of the best goal scorers in the world. Um, Lazio, you know, gives up opportunities. And at 10-5, he's almost just too easy to fit. Like, to me, and I'm giving you four core guys, like, you're welcome. Like, you made it however many minutes we are, and now I'm giving you some play. So you're welcome. But this is probably going to be my core um, without, you know, things happening. Just Joshua Kimmich. So I sent this to our chat in between so rare and top shot discussion. So you, if you, hey, if I didn't give you enough of a reason to join FSI just for the knowledge, now we're talking about all the games. So, so make sure you check it out. So it's been fun. Um, but Joshua Kimmich, I sent this. Actually, let me see if I can find the image. It's just, it is just so crazy. The game that he had, I think it was two games ago. All right. Let's see if I can scroll through and find it. All right. 90 minutes. All right. He had three assists, nine crosses, eight shots assisted, one shot on target, three shots off target. Like Kimmich is unreal right now. He's taking Monopoly their set pieces. Like Sané has been jumping on one or two, but I'm just going to call it Kimmich Monopoly. Even though he's in a deep lying role, he's just all over the place. Uh, Kimmich, honestly, in like three or four years, maybe even now, you might be saying Joshua Kimmich is the best midfielder in the world, in the world. Like Kevin De Bruyne is always there. I, I shouldn't hate hate on De Bruyne like by saying that, but like Kimmich is that good. He's so good, He's so silky to watch. So, so I, I recommend doing it. And I don't recommend fading him in DFS. Um, so I think those are the two Bayern pieces that you definitely get on. Um, Davies at forty four hundred starting to play better. Um, I like him. You know, if you if you need a punt, um, so Sule, where's he? Where he's at? If you don't know who Nicholas Sule is, by the way, so he is a massive human being. I think he's like 6'6 six, six or 6'7, six, just stout, just like the total Bayern guy now, like just muscular. And I just would, ne- I would not want to be in a fight against Nick Sule. He would kick my butt in a minute. No, 10 seconds. But he finally, he's playing like some version of like a right back for them. Look, he's not like being a normal right back. He's not like surging up to make crosses, but it does allow Davies a little more freedom to go up. And then, you know, it gets Sule into some positions where he could do some damage. It's always going to be because of his size, a set piece threat. So 3,700, I wouldn't say you're crazy. You don't get Lodi and you just want to go Sule. Like, I think that makes some sense. Alaba plays some sort of hybrid, like, uh, like pivot position um, a few games back. So just watch the Watch their um, their personnel. I think it's going to be hard to know, but you know he he played really well. It's like not this weekend, but it was like two games ago. The game that Kimmich went went crazy on too. Alabo had like three or four crosses as well, so he'd be interesting. Um, outside of that, um, the two defenders for Lazio. I, I'm I'm in like all sorts of weird order here, guys. So just like deal with it. Like it's been a weird day. It's like one forty five. Normally I do this at nine. I'm like I want to get this done. I'm all disjointed, but I'm getting you some plays. I hope you're enjoying this. Um, but the Lazio wingbacks is Lazari and why am I blinking on the other guy's name? Um, Maruzic. Lazari is the better player or the better DFS player. He loves to cross. Um, it was so weird when he first got to Lazio. I was playing a ton of him in the interleague. He was never crossing. He used to be a huge crosser before he got there. And he's finally back to that state. So Lazari 4,300, I think is fine. Um, I prefer him to Maruzic, but you know, both are playing wingback, so whatever. Um, but I think the top play for cash from Lazio, I guess, yeah, I'm jumping back. I'll go back to Bayern in a second. But the top cash play is Luis Alberto. Um, Monopoly set pieces. So class, class player. 7,000 is pretty cheap. Look, Bayern, this game's going to be open. It's going to be offensive. Um, you know, I think Bayern is going to have more possession, but Bayern is very, very susceptible on the counter. They're very susceptible to often. They're not keeping clean sheets these days. So I think getting a piece of Lazio, those odds are not something that you need to fade. So I think getting a piece of Lazio makes sense. Luis Alberto is the safest way to do that. I think for GPP, you definitely need to get your share of Shiro Mobile. Um, he's going to find pockets. He's going to have multiple opportunities to score a goal. And typically with Mobile, when he gets the chance, he's 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 sinking it. Um, so I like Mobile. Price is weird. Maybe he's going to be lower owned as a result. Um, that's really it from Lazio. Like if, you know, Savic um, always in play, you know, he can show you up back. 
for 5,700, I'd rather play the Bayern. I'd rather play Goretzka or I'd rather play Lazari or something like that. So GPP only. That kind of wraps up. I mean, Correa, I guess, is the other should play second striker. If you want somebody really low own, Correa would be there. Um, but again, I think my, my Lazio targets are uh, top in Alberto Cash, uh, Lazari Cash, um, and then uh, Immobile, more GPP, Correa, super GPP. Yeah, go from there. Other Bayern pieces. So, you know, if you go Lewandowski, um, you know, second forward, I think it's going to decide a lot here. I can definitely see going Leroy Sané, played great on the weekend, um, finally starting to look back to the player that, you know, they tried to sign. Um, you know, I think that it's going to be him or um, Alberto for most people. Uh, and then I think, you know, like from that Atletico game, uh, Suarez, Felix, and Werner are all viable pivots. Um, other things, Superman, uh, Leon Lea Goretzka, if you don't know why I'm calling Superman, just like look at Leon Goretzka pre-COVID and now look at his body type afterwards. Um, those are definitely not beers that he is drinking, <laughs> but 5,600, he's been playing like a number 10 role for them um, and been pretty damn good, gets off a lot of shots. Uh, so I think he is solid. Um, and I'll just look, I guess Janabri's out. So probably is Coman. Um, their front line should be Lewandowski, Coman, uh, Goretzka maybe in the middle, and then uh, Sané flanking him. Maybe you see Douglas Costa. I doubt it. Douglas Costa is just not a great player for them. Um, yeah, that probably should be their lineup. I think all of them are viable. All of them are viable in cash. Uh, Coman at 9,600 is probably the hardest, but hey, that also means he'd be lower earned. So go with that. Goalie, I already talked about. Goalie literally, the, more than any site ever, it's like just pay who fits. I think um, Pepe Reina is really interesting for the fact that, or, you know, Stratch, I can't say his name, but the Lazio keepers are interesting from the fact that I think people are going to have the salary. Most people are thinking are going to go O-block. I think he's going to be the chalk. Um, that's why I kind of started out the show with him. But I think most people are going to, are going to have the salary go whoever. So he probably is the lowest owned, but potentially has the highest upside for the amount of shots he's going to see. And if he stands on his head, gets eight saves, and Lazio wins one nothing. you know, that may be a GPP winning score with how much ownership Lewandowski and the Bayern Peace are going to have. So that's just an interesting thought on the goalie position. But honestly, play with fence. Remember, last reminder of the I, – I, I'll understand this on every video, but play the, plug the cheapest keeper, build the rest of your lineup. If you have the salary, then, then move on from there. All right, that'll do it. This has been fun. I've enjoyed this one. This is actually like one of the more fun recordings I've done in a while. But uh, I hope you all enjoy it. Please let me know if you did. Comment, like, all that stuff. I love to see it. Um, honestly, like, I don't know how many soccer videos I've done now. It's probably getting on the verge of like 150 to 200 on this channel enjoying every bit of it. Um, I love the feedback. I love hearing you guys that you win or that the advice help or the, even if the advice sucks, I still like to hear it. It motivates me to be better. So, so give it some love guys. Thank you all so much. Once again, keep AK Giga 231. See you.